Andre Drummond recently said that when he retires, he'll go down as the greatest rebounder of all time. Needless to say, he raised a few eyebrows with that statement. Well, let's decide. Is that facts or foolishness? Quick answer, this is ridiculous. Confidence is always key as a professional athlete, but this right here is too confident for Drummond. Yes, he has some stats he can point to. After all, Drummond can certainly rebound the ball at a high level. He's averaged 13.3 rebounds per game for his career, the 11th best in NBA history. He's averaged less than 10 rebounds in only two of his 10 seasons in the NBA and owns a 24.66 total rebound percentage, which just so happens to be number one in NBA history. Breaking that number down even further, he's number one in defensive rebound percentage in league history at 33.42% and number two in offensive rebound percentage behind Dennis Rodman. In fact, Drummond has two of the best total rebound percentage seasons in NBA history in 2017-2018 with the Detroit Pistons and 2021-2022 with the Sixers and Brooklyn Nets. Now for the more convincing counter argument. Rebound percentage didn't start getting calculated in the NBA until the 1970-1971 season. That's why you won't see Bill Russell or Wilt Chamberlain on any of those lists. And no basketball historian or enthusiast is picking Drummond in the debate for GOAT rebounder over those two all-time legends. Both Chamberlain and Russell averaged over 22 rebounds per game for their career, and they ranked number one and number two all-time in rebounds. And if rebound percentage was around for when they were playing, they would surely be at the top of those lists as well. Drummond is currently 52nd all-time in rebounds and would need 12,101 more rebounds just to top the late great Russell on the list and would need 2,304 on top of that to become the all-time leader. Drummond would have to average over 17 and a half rebounds per game for the next 10 seasons to reach the number one spot. Needless to say, that ain't happening. Drummond has only averaged more than 15 in three seasons of his career. At 29 years old, Drummond's minutes per game have been trending downward since leaving Detroit, and he's likely best suited as a steady role player down the home stretch of his career, especially as a non-threat to stretch the floor. Even if you took Russell and Wilt out of the equation due to their extreme size advantage over their competition during their heydays, there are still tons of other players who are more deserving of the title of greatest rebounder. Rodman, Charles Barkley, Dwight Howard, Rudy Gobert, and Moses Malone, just to name a few. Pound for pound though, Rodman has a strong case for the top spot. He is right up there with Drummond in the advanced metrics, ranking second in total rebound percentage, seventh in defensive rebound percentage, and first in offensive rebound percentage throughout history. And he's also much higher on the all-time leaderboard compared to Drummond, sitting at 24th, and had the single best rebounding percentage season in NBA history in 1994-1995 with the San Antonio Spurs. He is also three inches shorter than Drummond and approached the idea of rebounding like it was an art form. I just practice a lot about the angle of the ball and the trajectory of it. You got a Larry Bird, it's gonna spin. You got a, a Magic, it may be spin. When Michael shoot over here, I position myself right there. Now I hit the rim, it's boom, uh. Click and go back this way, boom, here, here. Click and go that way, boom, that way. Click here and go back this way. So basically, I just start learning how to put myself in a position to get the ball. Rebound, kept alive by Rod. Meanwhile, Drummond approaches rebounding like this. And that hasn't gone unnoticed by fans. So even if, by the end of his career, the numbers are comparable to Rodman's, Barkley's, or Howard's, Drummond won't ever be brought up in the same conversation for greatest rebounders because he has never been that caliber of a player. So while I like the confidence, he's just wrong.